I'm going to try to get this video series moving a little bit quicker here. Um, this video is going to be somewhat short to the point. If you want more details, check out the blog post here. All right, so this one's going to be on the physical server. Do we need a server? Since we determined we want a server, what kind of physical size server are we talking about? Are we talking about a uh, rack mount server? How about a tower? Um, for this installation, it's going to be very simple. It's just going to be a tower server. I'm not, I don't have enough room for a big server rack to slide in a server. There's really no need. So we're just going to go ahead and choose a physical tower for our server. Now within the server, I want to make sure that we have redundant storage and we have redundant power. For redundant storage, I'm either going to choose a RAID 1, two hard drives that are mirrored with a hot spare, or I'm going to do a RAID 5 with maybe three hard drives in the RAID 5 with one hot spare. Now for redundant power, I want to make sure I have two power supplies in this server. A lot of places I've worked at or I've walked into, I've noticed that the server um, is built to have or to, to, to house two power supplies, but they typically only have one for whatever reason. Maybe the quote was too high for the customer or something, but uh, I want to make sure I have two power supplies in there. In case one goes bad, it can still run off the second one. For our CPU in this server, since this is going to be what I'm thinking here is this is my domain controller um, and file server and probably maybe a couple other small ro roles, maybe like a print server and stuff. So as time goes on, since this series is going to be focusing on a lot of different technologies, talking about um, Exchange, Mail Server, um, WDS, WSUS, all this other stuff, we're going to be introducing more servers later into this environment. But for now, this is kind of our just our domain controller and file server, print server, DHCP server. Um, it doesn't need to be very powerful. I'm going to have a single CPU in it. Um, with RAM, I want to make sure I'm looking at probably 8 gigabytes minimum uh, with room to grow if we need to, but I don't think we will. But 8 gigabytes should do us fine. Now ports, I want to make sure I have a couple USB 3.0 ports and pretty much anything you buy these days is going to have that. Um, my idea here is to use those ports for a backup drive for some backups later on. So we'll get to that later. Now also I want to make sure we have a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply uh, for this server and a decent a decent wattage one, uh, one that should keep this server running a good 15-20 minutes with a monitor if you have to turn on the monitor and power down the server in case power failure happens, which it does. Uh, we want to make sure we're protected with a UPS. Now for software, this fictitious business, um, what I'm thinking here, or not what I'm thinking, what I'm pretending is the, the credit union already has a banking software company that they work with um, or that they're going to be working with. And that company um, has their, their banking software and servers and support for those servers. And I'm thinking it's probably a Unix-based server running whatever. I don't know what they're running, but um, this is what actually happens out there too. Is, so they're going to have a couple other servers housed somewhere in that server room or something, and we're not going to be touching that. That's just uh, for their banking purposes only. For software for our server, server I think we're going to shoot for Windows Server 2012 R2. Um, and I'm thinking since they have a foundation and essentials and a standard and data center, I'm thinking I'm going to try essentials. I've never used it. I've never played with it. Uh, the quick research I, I did do, it, it sounds like that's going to be our best bet is the essentials version. For backup and data recovery, in this scenario, I'm going to try to use just whatever's built into Windows here. Um, it's been a while since I messed with backups on a Windows server other than using third-party companies like Unitrans, that's what we use at the hospital, um, or Semantic Backup Exec, or you know, there's other ones out there too, but we're going to try just using what's built into Windows. Hopefully really soon we can get into the actual setting up the server and, and getting a domain set up and everything. So just bear with me. I'm, I want to try to take this step by step in an actual environment. And if you guys have tips or pointers, please let me know down below. If I miss anything, let me know. All right, guys. Talk to you later.